This right here is undoubtedly the most powerful Sportster Harley Davidson has ever made, but it's got one major flaw, and I'm gonna tell you guys all about it right now. Now before we get into all the interesting facts about the new Sportster S, we have to take a step back in time to see what the Sportster started as and then see how it became the redheaded stepchild of Harley Davidson. And I'm just saying it's the redheaded stepchild because it's a girl's bike and everyone hates it. You guys can put all the hate comments right down there in the comment section. It'll be very, I can't wait to read them. The year was 1957 and the company Whammo sells its first Frisbee toy. A gallon of gas was just 24 cents and the average price of a new home was $12,200. And Harley Davidson had just released the sportiest motorcycle that they have ever made, the Harley Davidson Sportster. Now at this time, they were not competing with the Japanese market. That wouldn't come until a few years later. At this time, Harley was competing with the Brits. The Triumphs and the BSAs and the Nortons were becoming popular and Harley needed a smaller, lighter, faster bike to compete. So the problem is what started out as their flagship sport bike soon became their legacy bike because they never changed it. They used the same Ironhead engine from 1957 to 1985, and then from 1986 and on, they used the Evo motor. If you took the greatest vehicle ever made and then continued making it but never changed it, eventually you change what it's great for. Instead of it being the sportiest, best performer, all the rest of the market kind of overcasted it, and then it just becomes the bike that's never changed. Someone at Harley Davidson heard one too many jokes making fun of the Sportster, and then he had his Thanos moment. Fine, I'll do it myself. Or another possible reason is that Europe put such strict emissions laws on motorcycles that Harley kind of had to phase out the old Sportster and had to build something new. The other option I have is that the Sportster wasn't selling very well and it was due for an update. It was about 60 years due for an update. And I guess I kind of dropped the hint on this one, but Harley did announce recently that they're gonna stop making the old style 1200 883 Sportsters and this is gonna be the new thing. And if Harley Davidson watching, I would like the opportunity to buy the last Sportster 1200 ever made, and I would like it in the, the crate. Just, if Harley's watching, let me know, hit, hit me up. But so whatever reasoning behind they decided to make the new bike, they did it and they created the most powerful Sportster ever made, and it's pretty impressive. So I know the question you guys are wondering, you're like, Sean, how do you keep that motorcycle so clean? I'm gonna tell you, M1 Moto Fast Detailing Spray. It's the only thing I use, and the cool thing about it is you can use it on all surfaces of the bike, the paint, the metal, the plastics, the plastic chrome, it makes it look awesome. You can also buy it for yourself and buy it for your dad, and then he'll finally respect you for the man that you actually are. Available at m1moto.com or Amazon. Now the Sportster S helps bring in a new generation of Harley Davidson motors. And this is the second Harley Davidson that's fitted with the Revolution Max engine, which is a 1250cc monster. It's liquid cooled, double overhead cam, and has variable valve timing, making a whopping, hold on, before I tell you what this thing's making, let me tell you what the last one was making. The last Harley Davidson Sportster 1200 made 60 horsepower and 70 foot pounds of torque. This guy makes a whopping 121 horsepower and like 97 foot-pounds of torque. It's almost double the horsepower. It's mind-blowing. So when Harley-Davidson did it, I mean, they went out, they went all out. And on top of it being the most powerful by far Sportster I ever made, it's also the most efficient. This thing will do 49 miles to the gallon. Now, I've never seen 45 miles to the gallon because I don't drive that way, but someone could, in theory. Now the other bike in Harley Davidson's lineup that also shares very similar Revolution Max engine is the Pan America. And just like the Pan America, the engine is a structural part of the chassis. So instead of the old Harleys where you had a full chassis, the engine sat inside, this engine's the middle of the frame. The bike also has adjustable rear suspension and front Brembo brakes, which is kind of unusual to me, but it's only a single-sided rotor. It's also one of the only Harley Davidsons outside of the FLH model line to have cruise control. So no more, uh, you know, twisting the grip and then turn that little, that little, that little throttle key to, to lock it in place. This actually is a proper cruise control where if you, if you set it, 
and you grab the clutch, brake, anything, it just shuts it off. Now the one part about this bike that I kind of have an issue with is the ergonomics. Now it's not bad, but it's very street rod-ish where you're, you got forward controls. The problem is this is, a, this is supposed to be a sports, it's supposed to be a sportier bike, and I would assume it would have had mid-range controls. But I think I know why they did it. You see, there's kind of a identity crisis marketing dilemma that Harley Davidson is going through in their marketing department. Because for them to grow, they have to grab a new audience. So here's an example of their current customer, and here's an example of their future customer. This is a circle that it's gonna be really hard to square without, you know, to, 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 to please one, you're kinda of gonna make the other one mad. So they're trying to find the best way to please both people, and that's not an easy task. So my solution is, I'm gonna cut Harley Davidson some slack, film them fix these problems with modifications, which they have. They've got mid-range controls for this bike. And that, that's the thing with, with, with most Harley Davidsons. If you have a problem with something, you just modify it, make it better. I don't know about you guys, but I'm dying to take this bike for a spin. But let me fire this thing up for you and let's show you what it sounds like. Hey guys, I start today with a good Bible verse, words of wisdom. We got John 4, uh, 4 11. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Amen. Let's put on the gloves, gotta put on the gloves, gotta wear the jacket, gotta wear the helmet. And I'm really excited to ride this bike. So they went with this cool new um, digital gauge right here, but I really like it. You can see it pretty well. I mean, we're, we're in pretty bright sunlight. A lot of, uh... oh, did I lose the key? My key battery's done. Ha <laughs> This is such a, it's a, it's a really, it really is a fun and fun bike. And um, the closest bike I could ever maybe put to this, maybe like a V-Rod. But um, to give you some context, we were putting this bike up against my, uh, my 131 Harley Davidson Road King, which that thing's horsepower and torque is, is dynoing at 140. Depending on who was riding it, this bike was keeping up with it like very, very well. I really enjoy it. I also like all the cool tech that they put on here. And this is kind of where they're trying to, I think they're really trying to grab that, that younger audience. You know, a lot of people think Harley Davidson's are really expensive. It's not that expensive. If I recall, it's somewhere in the 14,000 range. But for what you get, I think you're getting a lot of bike. There's also a way that you can plug your uh, your comm system and your music and tunes up through the bike. So you can control it right here. I never figured out how to do that. I don't got the time. But, but you definitely can. I'm more concerned about like getting horrible fuel mileage because I'm just flooring it and giving, giving her all she's got all the time and just really feeling feeling what this thing can do and it's now here's another awesome feature that comes on this bike look it's got um does, it, does anything happen i'm not seeing anything change when i press this maybe i need to go through the menu we'll see if the heated grips come on Ha -ha! it's got multiple different riding modes and bikes like this to be honest with you they need riding modes like that's a requirement and here's why. Bikes continue getting better. Faster, meaner, more powerful, quicker, better handling, all this stuff. But the new riders, they're not any better. They're the same new people that came that didn't know how to ride before. A new rider now, a 15 to 16 year old guy, 18 year old guy now is no better a rider from video games or anything than an 18 year old guy, you know, 50 years ago. So you have to put on these driver's aids you have to put on these things that are going to assist you to not kill yourself. So that's why I recommend keep those things on. Keep those things on while you're learning how to ride the bike, while you're getting used to it. You know, some of the worst stories you hear are the ones where like, you know, I'm driving, I drove out of the parking lot of the dealership, wrecked the bike. Everyone died. You know what I mean? Like that, that you never want to hear that. 
but that's that's kind of what happens when you don't put when you make these bikes so incredibly powerful and people see everyone else riding they're like well i can ride that too and you can but it might just take a little while it might take a little more of you just kind of taking it easy you know you can jump on a bike like this throw it on rain mode Ride around for a couple hours, a couple weeks, whatever, just get used to it. If a rain mode is horrifying you, then just keep it on rain mode for a long time. But you could you could jump on this bike and you could almost say like, if someone told you it was not a Harley, uh, I don't think you would conclude or assume that it was a Harley, just by the characteristics of it. Harley's not the only company that makes a V-Twin. You know, I'm mean, like, throttle is incredibly light. Everything about this bike is easy to do, the clutch, I could clutch this with one finger. I could one finger clutch this bike and it's very nice. And the levers are adjustable. I love that. I, why, why, are the, why are the levers not adjustable on my Road King? I guess because it's not a, you know, a sport, sportier bike. But I think Harley really did it right with this thing. And I do have mid controls that I'm gonna put on it that I'm really excited about. A lot of people complain about the, uh, the rear fender. I don't know what your problem is, man. There's regulations for that stuff. You need to be a certain spot. I think it's actually pretty cool looking. I think they did a pretty good job at it. I'm also excited to see uh, to see the future, what Harley does in the future. Alright, let's try a zero to 60. Now I've done I've done I've done this uh, over and over and over again, so I've got some good ones. This probably won't be one of those good ones, but let's try it anyway. There. This thing is a rocket ship. This is one of those rules I made for myself. I gotta keep it. If you're gonna wear a helmet, you better tie it and you better wear a helmet. This also gives us another good shot to accelerate and get back on the, keep up with traffic. So really, really fun bike to ride. It's also it's also really smooth on the highway. Probably one of the smoothest Harley Davidsons I've ever ridden. Even though it's a sports, there's nothing buzzy about it. It's just a really, really good ride. Now this seating position, I don't know if everyone's gonna want to do this for hours and hours. You know, I'm not. I don't know. And I know this bike was not designed for this. But I don't think you're gonna be wanting to do a thousand miles a day. If you're doing something like that, get your Ultra Classic, get your Road King, get your get your Road Glide, get your Street Glide, get your Golden Wing. It's you know, that's probably something else. But I've also done you know a thousand miles a day on a GSXR 600. So if I could do that, I could do it on this, no problem. I love the styling. I love that big, giant, fat tire on the front. I think it looks really cool. And overall, I'm excited about this bike. Also, I didn't mention this earlier. But the, uh, the front suspension is fully adjustable. You can see it right there. So it's a little attention to detail that they, they didn't cheap out on. That, that's why I'm excited about the, this, new, uh, this new sports arrest. But guys, that wraps it up. Check this, check this other video right up here. You're going to love it. And remember, it is not what you're riding, but where are you going? We'll see you guys next time.